Of course, um, the Blaze uh, Media turned over Instagram to you for the Democratic debates, which was a complete and total snooze fest on oh, Tuesday night. Brutal. So let's 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 get some more analysis real quick. I'm gonna throw out a couple of names here. Mm. I want I just want your off the cuff opinion, and then we'll go from there. Elizabeth Warren. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, I think, uh, and this debate convinced me of it. Is really a terrible person, mm -hmm. right? Like a fundamentally bad individual, right? I mean, you know, Bernie Sanders is, uh, you know, uh, would be an absolutely terrible president. However, do I believe he was behind the scenes in a meeting with Elizabeth Warren and just like, you know, what can't happen? Women be president. <laughs> There's just no way that occurred like that. Yeah. So Warren comes out because uh, Sanders has underlings, and they and they go out and I guess say that she's a little too elitist. Mm -hmm. Very tame campaign tactic, right? Then Warren leaks to the press blatantly that he said that she uh, she uh, he that that uh, Sanders did not believe a woman could be president. Um, her first answer was great because it was like, well, look, I'm not going to disclose anything that happened in a private meeting. It's like, wait, you're not going to come out and say he didn't say this? Like, I don't know. Did he say the N-word, too? We're not sure. I can't say anything. It's a private meeting. Um, and then uh, she finally comes out and confirms it, says, yes, he said these things. I mean, that is just a terrible thing to do to someone yeah. she calls a friend for 20 years. Is it possible that Bernie Sanders said, you know, look, I, you know, I, I think, you know, Donald Trump's going to unfairly attack women. He's going to be a misogynist. Very possible. I'm sure that's his analysis. Yeah. But, I mean, it's an obviously ridiculous thing. And then to call him out and and bring it up, it's like if it is sexist, what he said, right, then you're not going to be friends with him for 20 years. He's not a good candidate. It shouldn't be president, right? Mm -hmm. um, if it's not sexist, why the hell are you bringing it up? Why are you leaking it to the media? Why are you confirming it? And it just shows that she's just like a fun. I mean, look, she's lied about so much. Over and over. And Sanders, for all of his faults, isn't much of a liar. He just blurts things out that are socialist and should disqualify him from being president, but don't for some reason. Um, you know, but where, where Warren is, I mean, she's fundamentally lies to the cameras all the time. So I'm totally uh, believing Sanders on that one. And Warren is getting desperate, right? She's losing uh, now yeah. in Iowa. She's losing in New Hampshire. She needs to make a run. And this is that sort of, um, it's something that Beto O'Rourke um, copy, copy, had copyrighted when he was running, which is the, just sort of this Beto style uh, desperation yeah. where you're just, you're reaching for the stars and you keep falling on your face. Did you see the little interaction at the end of it where he reaches out to shake her hand and yeah. she pulls back and then he pulls back and you my, know that little. My theory is she had just sneezed in her hand. Uh, I said she was just being very nice and pulling the hand Think back. Think so? Yeah, no, yeah. no I no. don't. Uh, yeah, it was weird because then they seemed to talk, but it, it looked like kind of like rough. And then poor Tom Steyer came over and like people were like, who's this weird white guy on stage? <laughs> and uh, tried to break it up. It was a weird interaction. And then he kind of does this and goes, we'll table this. Yeah. We'll table this yeah. and we'll come yeah. back. You crazy <laughs> We'll come back. We'll be back with this. I did not. Okay, maybe I did use the N-word. <laughs> but we did that. We aired the clip of him in 88 saying... You know, he basically. But in a backroom me meeting, he could have simply said, "I'm more electable than you are." Right, which is and a, a plausible point. Yeah. And honestly, and and all, I, well, I don't think he's more electable than her, honestly. But right. also, I don't think anybody does. Yeah, but still, like that is a very typical piece of analysis on the left, right? Like there's this piece of analysis that, you know, and it's typical progressivism, right? They say, well. You know, we're enlightened. And, of course, we would want a woman president. We would want a person of color to be president. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Hillary lost because she was a woman. If we put a person of color up there, there's just too many racists, too many sexists. All those other people, you know, in Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, they just can't pull the, – they, they can't get there. They're not to our intellectual level. Therefore, we need to run a Joe Biden, right? We need to run some white guy who can be pretty progressive, but we can't get all the things we want because we have to keep them old and white and, and – and boring. Um, it's funny because the Democrats don't win with that profile. John Kerry uh, is a good example of it. You know, uh, Gore is another one. Anyone who's like older and not like the dynamic young guy, new kid on the block, yeah. typically loses for Democrats, but they keep trying to run them out there. I mean, what was the age of the combined age of the on that stage last night? I mean, a thousand. A thousand. There's six people. The combined age was a thousand. <laughs> that's that's incredible. Now Bernie was 700 of that, but still, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a high combined age. I remember the Honus Wagner card when it came out. I put it in a spoke on my bicycle. <laughs>
He had a cigarette thing on the back. That's why it's so valuable. It's a cigarette ad. He didn't like to smoke. Uh, Honus Wagner went into the Hall of Fame when Bernie was 80. <laughs> <laughs> that, I was voting. I always love the baseball clips where he's out there showing them, showing these mo- pro ball players how to hit. You know, oh. he's got his wrists all wrapped around the bat, and he's showing them how to how to hit. And it's like, first of all, any any coach that doesn't even know the game of baseball would tell you. If you're showing a major leaguer how to hit like this, and your hands are wrapped around oh my a bat, gosh. stop it, Bernie! Oh God, he's t- what is that with him? I think it's this like attempt to like make him seem like he's not going to keel over in the next yeah. five minutes. We well, you know Elizabeth Warren does this; she like runs up to the stage every single time to show that she can run, and she looks like an old lady running is yeah. kind of what she looks like. Um, uh, did it's you like see- a controlled fall. Did you see the video though of Bernie backing out of a driveway the other day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was the greatest thing I've ever seen. He like swerves like he's drunk, like at zero miles an hour back and forth. He doesn't look out both ways out the window as he's backing up into the street. He's driving like this little tiny smart car. I mean, it was like the, everything you'd say about an old person an old driving person. was was reflected <clears throat> in this clip. And I love when he's in the debate and they're trying to talk to him and they're asking him the questions. He's like, huh, hey, what? Oh. oh. I'm like, come on, dude. Yeah, we went. Somewhere your campaign manager's got to be just ready to <laughs> eat a bullet. I mean, you know, here you are doing a gun. Uh, why don't you get one of those horns and go, hey! <laughs> we went by that uh, on the uh, Blaze Instagram thing, went frame by frame on that one. Because yeah. there's that moment where he realizes he can't hear it, and his answer is to bring his hand up and cup his ear so that the sound comes in and gets kind of caught in his hand and pushed extra sound into his ear. And he realizes that's not going to be enough. So then he folds the ear forward to catch even more. <laughs> like it is a like he has like a science to this. It's pretty impressive. I would say yeah. quite presidential. His most presidential 100%. moment. One hundred percent. I'm just glad his hair was laying down. <laughs> yeah. Good God, this is a guy that got kicked out of the commune for being lazy. Oh. So Pete Buttigieg. Yeah, I, you know Buttigieg is just. For a guy who actually has a pretty remarkable early part of his life, mm-hmm. he's very unremarkable. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't think Buttigieg has put in a, a debate performance that was any lower than a B minus or any higher than a B plus. Mm-hmm. He's relatively consistent, boring. He's a smart guy, I think. Um, he's able to kind of roll with the punches and he doesn't get flustered easily, um, which is uh, not a terrible profile to go up against Donald Trump. I mean, there's an argument for Buttigieg and that he's such the opposite of Trump in a debate where he's so much more, you know, calm and collected where Trump is more on of the attack dog. Yeah. It might be an interesting profile to see, but I don't think he's going to get through the primary. He just can't make he he's, can't make an impression. You know, Cory Booker has somewhat of that same problem. Never found a base because he's just kind of unremarkable in, in a lot of ways. And, you know, him and uh, Klobuchar have sort of just blended in as, uh, you know, just another set of voices. Nothing really remarkable, nothing really terrible, yeah. you know. But uh, you could see one of them maybe being a vice presidential thought at some point. Um, not, maybe not this time for Buttigieg, but, you know, you could see. I mean, Biden Buttigieg wouldn't be a shocker. No. If Biden were to win and pick pick him, I, it wouldn't be Stunner or Biden, even Biden Booker. You could see those things. Buttigieg, I think, though, is, I mean, look, the guy is still, you know, there's a guy, Wayne Messam. Did you mm-hmm. hear about him who ran Wayne Messam? He was a, he used to play for Florida State. He was a, he's a mayor of Miramar, Florida, ran for president, 0% the entire time. He, he actually, for an entire quarter, while he was running, raised a total of $5. I kid you not, it was in the report, $5 he raised. Um he runs a city bigger than Steve, Pete Buttigieg. You could do this. <laughs> you could do this. Steve. I think I could. I could raise. Five. I could raise ten. Oh yeah, easy, yeah. easy, easy. Uh, you know, it's it's. I don't know that it, it's his time. I I do think that the, he's going to be a guy that's going to be in our faces for for a while though. Yeah. Uh, he was a guy that was. You know, one of the reasons why he did well and why we took him seriously early on when we were doing the analysis is that Obama identified him as a rising star. Obama made a stand in a speech unprompted. You know who's a great guy is this guy from South Bend, Pete Buttigieg. You're going to love him. You're going to get to know him soon. And, you know, he's made a run. It's been Big an impressive yeah. uh, impressive run, but I don't think he's going to win the nomination. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting deal to see. You think if all this stuff kind of lines out the way that it goes, let's say there's a big impeachment trial and they start subpoenaing people and, and senators have to do the work of senators, mm. does that hurt Joe Biden or is he going to hang in there with this deal? You know, I'm of the belief that, you know, people are so – have their minds made up so much – I actually think this should be a positive for Biden, at least in the primary. And, you know, there is a kind of an argument, I think, where Biden has done a terrible job of this because he's not a very good candidate. I mean, he wasn't a good candidate in 1988, let alone in 2020. But, you know, you have this guy who um, 
you know, Trump has put him on the marquee with him. Trump is saying, like, this story is about Ukraine. You know, if, I'm, if I'm Joe Biden, I'm going out there every day and saying, you know what? Donald Trump got impeached. You know why? He was so terrified of me. Mm-hmm. He's calling foreign leaders and trying to get dirt on me. Now, that's not that you know, true, per se, but when has that ever stopped Joe Biden true before? Enough. True uh, enough for their standards, yeah. Yeah, I think so. And, like, I, I think it's a way to say, like, uh, you know, it's it's Rocky versus Apollo Creed. You know, like, your your name is on the marquee now. Take that. You're the front runner. You're the guy. This is the, the guy that Donald Trump is, is afraid of, and that's why they're trying to get rid of me. Um, he's done a bad job, I think, taking advantage of that. Long term, if there was a long trial, I think, in the general election, if Republicans could do their jobs well, and that is a large if, uh, there's a lot of damaging stuff there. I mean, you know, who knows what the heck they've been involved in? I mean, you know, you look at Hunter Biden's history, what stuff has gone on? And, and, you know, you you know this. I think Biden at some level, the same way Lori Loughlin is, is kind of a good dad. Mm-hmm. And that, like, he's like, you know, I think of Lori Love, and she's kind of a good mom. Like, I mean, look, she shouldn't have done any of that stuff. But what was she trying to do? She's trying to do the best thing for her kid. Yeah, she's throwing her money around. Like, you know, in a way, I kind of, it kind of makes me like her. And, and in a way, I give a break with Biden in that. You know, like, you, you look at Hunter Biden's history. It's been a disaster. And you picture your kid going through times like that when, you know, he basically can't go through a small town without impregnating a stripper. Like, th- that is like... There are times where he probably stood up and said, "God, what can I do? I don't care. I don't care if it's right or wrong. I want to step- <laughs> look at the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got to do something to save my kid." Yeah. And, and he may have bent a lot of rules, and the more of that stuff that comes out, that could hurt him. I think in the general. Yeah. But as far as the primary goes, look, no, no, no Democrats are going to believe anything that the Republicans say anyway. I'd be running on. The, I'd be running this as a as a badge of honor. Every chance I'd have to to remind people that Donald Trump risked his presidency Mm -hmm. again this is their analysis not mine Mm, but risked his presidency to stop me that's how important he thought it was he's terrified of me why he doesn't go down that road more often i don't know that's the analysis you're gonna get Stu does america Mm -hmm. it's analysis with humor it's my favorite thing and i really don't like anybody else around here but Stu. yeah i I, the only show i watch this is the only show i'm doing on this This, network there it is that's it there it is gonna start on the 21st on the 21st, it's going to be available. You can get Blaze TV. You're going to have it on the YouTube. Yeah, it's going to be on YouTube everywhere. We're going to start like some content preview stuff the 21st, yeah. and the full show starts the day after the caucus on February 4th.